Good afternoon, everybody, and a happy Friday. Um, let me turn down that music just a little bit, or at least maybe in my ears. Happy Friday! We made it to the end of the week. <laughs> I am so happy to be here with you today on this episode of D&D But Make It Fashion. This is the Friday show that I do where I take a monster, a random monster, from the monster manual, and I create a piece of fashion out of it. So I have a fun one for you today. It's the doppelganger. And once we have more people in the chat, you know, to talk about things and work on stuff, uh, we'll kind of go into that. But first, I want to see how you all are doing. Um, hope you all are doing well today. Let me know how you are doing. Hi, Becca. Nice to see you in the chat today. Yes. Yay. Yay. It is Friday. <laughs> you know, even though it's quarantine and like it's every day kind of feels like the same, there is still a sense of like, yay, Friday. I'm, I'm happy that it's Friday. <laughs> um, so I'm just shaking up some tea, um, iced tea at least, making sure it's all mixed. I do have a timer going in 20 minutes. I need to go get something. Um, so I don't know. It's just my laundry. I have to go get my laundry in 20 minutes. So I'll have to pop just quickly. You know, it's not far away from me. Um, hi, Krom. Welcome, welcome. Oh, it's 75 and rainy in Colorado, and Holly, are you you two are making strawberry muffins. That sounds delicious. Um, mm, that sounds so good. So, I am going to get this up and rolling here. Let's see. Yes, so today... We're working on the doppelganger, and this guy is, you know, kind of, I don't want to say bland looking, but a little bland looking. It's a humanoid. It can take on the form of any humanoid creature in D&D. If you want to get some really good information on the doppelganger, I'm going to post a link in the chat. Uh, this is from the Adventurers Pack, the episode of the Beast Theory, where they were, did the doppelganger. And I actually just rewatched it a few minutes ago just to kind of get my head in the space of working on the doppelganger. And I find it really fascinating. You know, it's kind of used in the sense of like it can infiltrate things because it can take on the form of pretty much anybody it sees. And um, I thought it would be interesting to do kind of a collaborative effort today where we can, I, I take something from each of you and create a piece, almost like it's assuming the identity of whatever it is that we're creating. So um, there's that. I don't know if we're going to, if I'm going to really work with this color palette, it's pretty monotone and maybe that's fine. You know, there's there are some like beautiful rusty reds in here this is what I would call like a dusky blue. Oh, you can actually double check that. Yeah, it's it's a blue, it's a dusky blue. So we could keep it in the same color palette or we could just kind of go crazy and figure it out as we go along. There's nothing super exciting about doppelgangers as far as features go. They kind of have like these pointy ears. They don't have mouths. They have these unblinking, creepy looking pale eyes. I don't know. And if you watch the Bestiary episode, they talk about how it kind of looks like it's been made of clay. Totally. I totally see, like, the artist rendition of this definitely makes it look like it's been, like, lobbed on to this form. And they've created basically an underlayment of bone and muscle and they haven't really put on the final layer of skin and it's kind of gruesome but kind of cool all at the same time so that's our prompt today is doppelganger which is a real german word by the way it comes from folklore they also talk about that in the bestiary episode so the first things that we got to do is drop the opacity down 
Oh, cool, he didn't need to sleep ever again. Yeah. That sounds about right. So I'm just going to start doing my line art layer for the body. I need to start putting those brushes in different places. And I'm going to make sure that I name this layer, which is the body line art. So how are you doing, Krom? You're playing tonight, right? I think, is it Lilith that's off on the gauntlet tonight? Hey, that was a little big. And a little wonky. Wow. There we go. Scott. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing today? That's good. Now that you have some time to relax before the gauntlet, I know that you got some work done yesterday. Granted, I also know that you have like a whole studio to set up essentially, <laughs> so. <laughs> also, I chose this pose. I liked how cocky it seemed. I don't know, There, there's just something that I like about it and it seemed to mentally fit in with the doppelganger for some reason. Also, I apologize if you can hear any of my neighbors, because today apparently is bang on things with a hammer and or blast music and or anything. So I don't mind it. And like, Lord knows that I can be really loud when I'm doing stuff like my Glowforge, but Just kind of like all at once today. I'm like, okay, cool. That's fine. go. And then let's clean up some of these little areas here. There we go. <laughs> well, that happens sometimes. Okay. So I can 
get rid of this one. No, I can't. Let's undo that. I completely missed this side. music there it is okay. hi lion's tooth also just to let you know um your print already went out so that's that was way faster than i was expecting yes it is digital art um just gonna call you leaky that's all I'm gonna call you. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the stream. This is my show D and D, but make it fashion. Um, and I take a random monster from the Dungeons and Dragons monster manual, and I make something out of it. So, yeah, you do traditional art. Welcome. Yeah, I do traditional art, digital art, whatever. On this show, I do digital art because it's the easiest setup. So, but I do have. Um, my background in traditional art, so yeah, <laughs> your kids chose your name. All right, all right, I'm. <laughs> ah, that's good. I don't even want to ask why why they called you that, but you know, welcome. <laughs> Anyways, so at this stage of the game, I am going to create a layer here. Let's use a sketching pencil. And let's throw out some ideas. So uh, anybody who wants to throw out what they want to see, essentially, on this. Um, do we want avant-garde? You know, red carpet? We did a business casual look, sort of, uh, on when Wednesday? Was that Wednesday? Yeah, it was Wednesday. So we can do some streetwear. It was kind of a mix of streetwear and business casual. It was, it was a fun one on Wednesday. You should check it out on the VOD if you can. But yeah, is there anything in particular that y'all in the chat want to see? Do we want to see separates? Do we want to see a one piece, something, pants, slacks, dress, skirt, blouse, A-line, princess. <laughs> oh, they wanted one where people would mock me. Oh, buddy. Well, you are welcome here. Um, I won't mock you for your name. I just won't say the whole thing because, you know. Something from 16th century. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. So that means I'm going to need to... <laughs> Okay. Ooh, all right. So we're looking at big skirts and stays. I see. We're looking at almost Elizabethan era. Um, loose top vest and pants. Okay, we're gonna. I'm writing down everything. We'll see how much gets put in this. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Tailcoats are a thing. That could be an interesting interpretation. They have poofed sleeves up at the top, like sleeve um, shoulder caps. So, Leaky, what kind of art do you do? Um, I guess what what genre is it that you go for? Portraits, nice. That is something that I don't do. Um, I'd like to get into that a little bit more, but my background is in actually photography in studio arts, but also in fashion. So that's why I do fashion illustration. 
Okay. So that will work just fine. That gives me some sort of platform here. The other question is, do we want to do a the same color scheme as the drawing, which is what I normally do, but this is a doppelganger. So um, it's one of those things where since it can take on the form of other people, it wouldn't necessarily take on like the same coloration as when it's in its first form, <laughs> if that makes sense. So we can do, so basically let me ask this question to the chat make a color palette based off of this art or do we do a random color palette from the list of color palettes that I've already done? Okay. We've got one vote for random. So you do animal, animals and humans also do characters for people for D&D. Oh, that's cool. I'm so excited that you're here. Yeah, it's an interesting little, uh, what would I call it? The Venn diagram of artist and D&D &D nerd. I'm, I'm in between those two. <laughs> um, so Fridays are the only show that I do D&D &D but make it fashion. Mondays and Wednesdays I do a different prompt. So August it's been art but make it fashion. Uh, next month it's going to be musical theater but make it fashion. So that one will be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll start that one on Wednesday. So Monday is our final art but make it fashion for this month, obviously. And can't believe it's September. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so yeah, the, the first stream of September, which is Wednesday, is going to be... Um, oh, Krom. Yes, Krom is one of your... is one of your D&D... So, leaky old man butt. Um, this is one thing that I will say. After my show at 5 p.m. Pacific time, I usually head over to Adventurers Pack, which is the channel that I mod for, and they have a D&D &D show tonight called The Gauntlet. And The Gauntlet is a show where a team of four adventurers, it's a rotating cast, so there's five cast members, but on any given episode, there's four of them. And they're going through the monster manual A through Z, A through Z, 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 um, by challenge rating and they just got to challenge rating one last week if i remember correctly yeah it was at the end of last week they got to challenge rating one so they're into some fun stuff right now um okay so it looks like i'm just gonna go with random which let's do a number between one and 30 okay let's see choose a number between one and 30. 18. All right. You also write... Oh, you're nice. All right. You're the coolest. You just have to stay here forever now. Like, awesome. A PhD in particle physics. Ugh, yes. My other degree was in ecological and evolutionary biology, so not, not the same. <laughs> uh, but I love, oh my god, I used to love physics. Uh, okay, so we're going to do a random color palette. It's number 18. I don't know if I have that many. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right, so we're using the Iron Golem palette. That's fun. <laughs> you prefer wisdom. Um, and also, yeah, thank you for following. That was... My little zombie guy that I need to, I need to update that. I haven't made any of my own emotes or anything because I'm not yet an affiliate. So, um, although you just put me one step closer to affiliate. So I need 23 more people. Tell your friends, tell your family. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so time to drop the opacity on that layer. I don't need that one going right now. Okay, so we think a loose top, a vest, pants, tail coats were big, big dresses were big, um, the shoulder poof sleeves, 
Um, oh, thank you. That's very sweet of you. Um, and ruffles. So I think for sure I want to create some sort of poofed sleeve. But kind of keep it loose still, because we want somewhat of a loose top. So do you stream on here, Leaky? And just a fair warning, I'm about to um, have to pop off and go get my laundry, so. Yep, there it goes. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. And I will be back in just a couple of moments. All right, and I'm back. Um, yeah, and I was seeing in the chat the um, yeah traditional art. Traditional art is exceedingly difficult to film. I mean, it's it's one of my favorite things to do. Like, there's something about having pencil and paper, and then um, I either usually use watercolor or Copic markers, and there's just something about having that tactile experience that I love. And it's digital art just does not capture that for me and um you're right too like <laughs> those faint lines do not show up on camera at all uh <laughs> if you have properly lit stuff like otherwise you know it's hard to do it but it takes a long time to to do that stuff i will say it does take about an hour and a half to three hours for me to do any one of these fashion illustrations so it doesn't change the timing, but at least you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to give her a high collar here. I don't know why, but I, I like it. And then what I think I'm going to do, instead of giving her a big poofy dress, I am going to take the idea of pants. However, this is going to be a little weird, but I'm going to create like a vest. 
your goal is to reach the same level as your idol. Who's your idol? Although I haven't gotten told yet anywhere that it says stream down. Um, is it down for anybody else? Granted. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what it is about my connection, but it sometimes goes down. So what can I do? So I'm basically going to turn this vest into like a vest with coattails um <laughs> oh too high there we go but it's not a coat you see what i mean yeah, let's bring it up this way You're drawing the farmer right now. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to give her... No, I kind of want to give her some pants that are a little bit more form-fitting. That my hands do not want to work with me right now. It's fine. I don't need control over my hands to draw or anything. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I do love it when people think, oh, you can just like... You can just do that, right? It's it's fast. No, it's not. Not to mention the years of practice and the hours and hours and hours that you put into doing stuff to make yourself more efficient and to make yourself faster. Like back when I was learning all of this, I was really slow. It would take me like five, six hours to do a really nice sketch and, or not sketch, a nice drawing. And now, yeah, I can do something like in an hour and a half, and it comes out pretty dang good. But there's a lot of things, too, that just take way longer. <laughs> okay. 
There's a part of me that wants to put like a ruffle on the pant, like down at the bottom, but I think that would start to look a little like mariachi. And I, that's not really what I'm going for. You know, this is more fantasy flavor on this kind of show. I like to have a story with these people. It is an underrated skill. Okay, so I'm gonna drop that opacity down on that layer as well. I might have to, if we have time today, I would like to show you something that's kind of like a secret. It's kind of a secret, it's, it's me working on stuff, but something that I have been working on since Wednesday. After that stream, I was really, really inspired, so. And apparently I'm into layering this week. So. <laughs> you can do eyes and nose. Eyes is, oh my god, eyes, noses, ears. <laughs> Fast. My mouth still takes some time. Yeah, eyes I'm okay at. Noses I'm not great at. Ears I'm pretty good at. Mouths and I, we just, we're not on speaking terms. So, <laughs> that's why I use these crow keys for a lot of my work. It's because I want people to actually be able to see what I'm working on, so. Yes, Krom, secrets. Really, it's not a big secret, but what I am doing is I am making the map shirt a thing. I'm going to make it a real thing. So, A, wish me luck. Yeah, you used to sit and draw hundreds of eyes a day. Yeah, I love it. That's what you gotta do, you know, to get better. Just practice, 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 practice. <laughs> Thank you, Leaky. Yeah, I like to do my sketch layer. I don't always. Sometimes I'll just, like, freehand the whole thing. Um, and that usually works fine. But on these kinds of sketches where there's a lot going on, I really, really, really... Or illustrations, I should say. I really like to do a sketching layer. Oh, shoot. before I jump in. So maybe I'll add a little bit of a ruffle to the sleeve, like just a little one. And again, we're not doing a big one. There's already a lot going on in this particular realm, so.
You are so right. For my last fashion show, I hand drew all of my sketches initially, and when I tried to digitize them and do stuff so I could manipulate the fabric and stuff, oh man, the pain of like, oh wow, I really wish, excuse me, I had done this line differently or something of that matter. Um, you know, it's really hard to fix when it's traditional media. Okay, so I'm actually gonna... Yeah, it's a complete headache. Completely. Yeah, the one thing about pen for me is just I always need to remind myself um... Sorry. Focusing on that little line here. Uh, I need to remind myself to just do as few passes as possible with the pen and not do like that because then you, you do get a little scratchy or jagged. Exactly, yeah. So right now I'm just going through and checking that my lines are all connecting. So when I start doing fill ah, fill layers and such, I don't completely destroy things. I do need to add those ruffles. Those ruffles. a small cuff. Just itty bitty. I will lace those later. So I'm kind of giving her some Victorian riding boots. Oh, that's not where it goes. And 
I know that her pants aren't tucked into the boots, which would be normal, but... You know, here's the thing that I will say is the benefit of digital. Is that you can undo things really quickly and it gives you, like, it takes just as much skill to do something well. Um, but that's, <laughs> you know, it's just digital and you, you have more leeway as to, like, fix things. Okay, um... <sighs> do we do... I kind of want to give her a witch hat. I don't know why, but... It just seems appropriate. These parts I don't mind being a little bit more jagged here. I don't know, maybe this character is a doppelganger wizard. So this type of hat was definitely like a real thing at some point. Like there there were some hats that looked similar, but they're not quite not quite what we think of today. <laughs> Again, I know these buttons seem uncharacteristic. But I'm also, here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to translate my style and also just like my creativity into this. So I'm not going accurate hardly at all, if at all possible. And I am creating this character, essentially. Like, at least the outfit. Okay. So this is my clothing. Minor. going to need a... Oh, hi, Eric. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to do a pants fill. A blouse fill. How are you doing today? Wow. Not blues. Blouse. Blouse. Bill. 
goes to So I like to try to stack my layers in order of how the outfit actually is built. Um, oh, also, thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's looking good too. <laughs> all right. So let's take a look at our palette again. So right, there's a lot of pinks and reds, some warm tones. A couple of purpley tones, some earth tones. So I think what I'll do, let's make the pants a nice neutral tone. We'll make the blouse maybe more of a pinky tone. The vest is that purple tone. And I'll probably do the hat and the vest the same color. So. Let's start with the vest. Yep, I knew that was gonna happen because I didn't make this my reference layer. <laughs> and that means I've got a leak somewhere. There we go. Hello, Mom! Welcome, welcome! We found that Mom just helped with the papers, and we can do... Yes! Okay, let's talk about that for a second. Because when I was in college... Also, how are you doing, Mom? Sorry, I didn't ask. <laughs> um, when I was in college, I was in both the art program and the science program, like I was mentioning. Oh, bother, bother, bother. I made my fix on the wrong layer. There we go. So um, since I was in both of those worlds, I never felt like I fit in perfectly into either one of them because I had a very artistic brain that was sometimes too artistic for the science folk. And I had a science brain that was too sciencey for the artistic folk. So, you know, that was fun. However, the one thing I will say is I feel like having a mix of both is super, super, super important. Um, it's one of those things where I think being able to illustrate what you're trying to say to people in like a scientific journal or, you know, really in any situation, having a little bit of artistic skill is so important. Like without science illustrators, there's a lot of stuff that we just wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. Let's go back here and do the hat fill. Okay, so let's do the blouse. And I was thinking, this is a lovely color. Another thing here. Back to the blouse.
Aha. I confused myself with my line art. Not gonna lie, the music that's going on right now in the background sounds almost like the Pokemon like fight music. Even though I know it's not. Self-organizing particles and then opening Oh man, I'm I'm so into that. Okay, pants fill. That's smart about this as well. Okay, I am loving this color palette in this way. Wow. I'm gonna have to compare her with the Iron Golem. So. <laughs> see, see, but I'm the weirdo that, like, if, if we were to meet at a party, I would just sit there and listen to the, like, the whole thing. I'll go on, like, YouTube tangents on random science stuff. Just whatever, you know, whatever catches my fancy, and then I'll spend like three hours binge watching every video I can find out about it. The pink should be a little darker. Um, I'll, uh, we'll see about that. I'm gonna check when I do the shading and stuff. We'll we'll see. Because I try not to alter. The color palette too much um that came from the the original art from the iron golem but we'll see i'll everything is allowed to be played with so i'm trying to think about shoes what color are you okay so you're like a brownie red I suppose I could give the same purple treatment. Is that just the same? It is not. That was a mind thing. Okay, shoe fill. Just an empty spot, not a color. <laughs> what a strange thing I'm doing. Yeah. We'll see. I really, I don't want it to be pink, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, see, for me, that makes it a little less natural. <laughs> Sorry, lines too. Uh, 
know, except was that even on the- okay, it was. It's like, was that even on the right layer? I suppose I should do a buttons layer. I kind of forgot that those were a thing. Buttons. Build. Okay, so with the buttons, even though normally um, I don't like to stray from the color palette with accessories and stuff, I'm okay with doing that. So I'm trying to think of like maybe a brassy button would look good against that purple. And our highlighting and shading will help give those dimension. Oh, see you, Krom. I will see you in about an hour. Um, let's kill some big monsters. <laughs> hmm. So, and this is going to be random, but the tea I'm drinking today, uh, I mixed two bags of Celestial Seasonings Red Cherry Berry and two bags of Celestial Seasoning Sleepy Time Vanilla. And it's like a cherry vanilla iced tea and it's just so good. So good. Okay, looking at the whole outfit, the shoes are too dark. So, I think I'm gonna give her red shoes, which is a little cuckoo. I think that's better. Yeah, I like to look at it on both my iPad and on my screen, so that's why you see me like glance back and forth. BT dubs. Okay, so now it's time for like texturing. I think for the vest and the hat, I want like more like a woolen feel, so something very soft. However, I think... Let's look at some textures here. I think this carbon stick will give me the type of texture that I'm looking for. And so I'm just going to pop in a clipping mask layer over the vest fill. And I should have masked off the collar, because I want the collar to be satin, just kind of like a traditional men's tail coat would have. So I'm just going to erase that particular part of the texture. But yeah, that gives like a nice woolen effect. I like that. So I'll do the same treatment to the hat, well, except <laughs> clipping mask, yay! <laughs> Need to go back to the blast fill and...
that's a problem. I put the shoe color on the wrong layer. Let's work on the pants next. I think I'm going to go with the Tarkeen or nah, no, not those. intrigued by this Galax Galaxis? Is that what's called? Galaxius? I don't know. Anyways. Of a strange texture. Oh, where's my oh Salamanca? I was like, where's my baby? That one never does me wrong. I need a lighter hand with a lighter color. And then I'll shade that back. So this just gives kind of like a woven look. All right, see you, Becca. Thank you for, um, for watching. And it definitely has like a very fall vibe. Maybe I'm feeling the fact that it's September, even though it's been hot as Hades outside. So yeah, thank you for watching and I will probably see you on Monday show. And of course, you know, I'll be texting and stuff. So <laughs> for the shirt, I'm not going to change the texture of that because I want it to be really smooth. Very, very, very smooth. And so that one will get the shading treatment. And then the shoes themselves. I might do some fun, like, filigree work on that. So let's actually do that now. I'm going to pick a dark red, and let's do an inking tip. And let's make sure that we're on the right layer, which I'm not. <laughs> yes, it would be. Again, that's one of the benefits of digital art. Is it allows me to do some things that I just wouldn't really be able to do well or easily. Yeah, it's not perfect, but that's okay. I should make that a clipping mask, just in case, because then I don't have to worry about that too much.
I really hate the foreshortening on this. <gasps> it's fine. <laughs> now to replicate this <laughs> on the shoe. <laughs> I can't say that I was really thinking about that. You know, again, it's art. It's art. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to sort of match. I don't need to beat myself up if it's not perfect. Yeah, you know, the copy and paste is fine, but because the they're all just different enough, You know, sometimes I wonder what the heck my neighbors are doing. It's just like a strange, like it almost sounds like they're working out, but maybe, I don't know. You would beat yourself up. <laughs> well, it, that's exactly it. It's like the angle is exactly where they're a little bit different. So I'm not going to lie, I, I really loved doing that, so I might... ...do something kind of similar here. Taking lots of inspiration from my sketch on Wednesday, doing all of these detail things.
See, but you said don't don't ask me to tell you, but now I want to ask you to tell me. If you want, um, yeah, I mean, go ahead. I mean, go ahead and pop it in the chat if if you are comfortable doing so. If not, we can connect on Discord or something, and you can tell me <laughs> what it is, because now I'm intrigued. So this doppelganger is going to be a wild magic sorcerer. That's what I'm picturing in my head. Why not? Her name is Lucretia. I should probably write that down somewhere because maybe I'll roll a character. <laughs> this the way here? Yeah. Most of the rituals ended with the death of- <laughs> that's- yes. I mean, death rituals are fascinating, and also probably- One downside of digital art is when your iPad just doesn't want to listen to you and thinks that it that you gave it a different command. Yeah, that's probably it. That's fine. These things happen. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. I'm 
have to use that in something else. And I know exactly, I'd probably embroider this. Also, I'm reading your story, by the way. I'm just, I decided to not uh, recite everything because <laughs> people can read, I'm sure. And if they have vision impairment, I believe they have like re reader. Huh, that's cool. Yeah, my modem, ugh. I don't want to talk about my internet issues. <laughs> it's just been trials and tribulations over the last few months, so. So anyways, I would keep telling your story. Or is that the end of your story? Goodness gracious, I'd like to fly around the world. I miss traveling. Time to do some shading. So where all did you fly? I'd, I'd love to know. And what was this revelation?
let's do the pants next because those are bothering me. Music even playing on there? Oh, kinda. Jeez, it's quiet. Well, that's really cool, Wakey. Thank you for sharing that. Also, I definitely specifically chose this particular, um, they call it an album or radio station with the, the music that I'm using because it's cinematic and epic, so. If it ever gets too loud, just let me know. Because I can turn myself up or turn it down. East Russia, Japan. You haven't gotten to China. Yeah. I've never been to Asia. Um, I've mostly done my traveling here in the US or in Europe. But I haven't seen nearly as much as I would like to. Like, not nearly as much. Oh, hey, Carrie, you are, you have been able to make it at least a little bit. Great. How are you doing today, Carrie? Easiest shoot day ever. <laughs> well, that's good. Am I allowed to ask what you were working on, or is it kind of uh, NDA kind of thing? That's what I, that's what I thought. <laughs> oh, NDAs, gotta love them. I had a boss, oh my god. That just reminded me, my last boss. Um, I'd always be like, okay, like, don't tell anybody about this new thing that's going on. And then of course he'd be the one to leak it. And then me being the PR and marketing person would have to clean up the mess. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, 
thanks for leaking the thing that we weren't supposed to leak and you told us not to leak, but you leaked it, and now there's a big rigmarole that I have to clean up. It's great. Super great. They never tell you about that part of PR. I mean, they kind of do, but... Ah, that was the wrong button. Okay. So I'm just softening this shading a little bit. Because, again, I want to keep this blouse really just, like, gentle and delicate, but not too much. Hi, Emmy. Welcome. How are you doing? I know you're getting prepared for the gauntlet. We're just having a party over here with the doppelganger. Yeah, Carrie, it, it was not not fun. It's like, you know, you have to be careful about who you tell stuff to, especially when they, like, have an online presence and are one of the leading brands that carry your product. Yeah, if you tell them something, but you don't tell them, hey, don't don't tell the world. They're gonna tell the world! Yes, so what I ended up doing, Emmy, is basically pulling from the audience some questions, like what, what we should do, and we've just started building. So, what we have here is a doppelganger wild magic sorceress <laughs> named Lucretia. Um, and we're using the color palette from the Iron Golem because we decided to use basically pull colors from another creature. Even though I know doppelgangers can only do humanoids, I don't think an Iron Golem is technically humanoid because it's a construct. But yeah, I, I really like how it's turning out, and, you know, it's kind of fun because the doppelganger really lets me just do whatever, so it's pretty great. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Well, okay, then. Oh, and I should mention to the chat, those of you who don't know, which I think most of you do know, but Emmy is one of the people who do the bestiary, and I will repost that link again. So this is the video on the doppelganger. It's really, really well done. I highly suggest going and subscribing to Adventurer's Pack. They put out a lot of great content on their YouTube channel and on their Twitch, and in about half an hour, I will be headed over to their Twitch channel for the gauntlet, where I will get cozied up in the chat and get my band hammer out just in case. Oh yeah, I like her. She can stay. Um... Where am I? Okay, body line art. I need to bring the opacity back. Cool. Yeah, Eric, it's a fantastic video. That whole series is great. And it's like my favorite Saturday morning thing is to wake up and I know that the gauntlet, or not the gauntlet, um, the bestiary is usually up within a couple of hours of me waking up. So it's like I get to have some coffee and watch the bestiary. They're currently working on dragons. So, um, Emmy, which one is coming out this Saturday? If you would like to plug it.
green and brass dragons. Awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> well, if I ever do green dragons, that will give me a personality to go off of. Okay, I love her. Like, she's definitely going to be a character now. I'm going to have to roll for this character. I might actually, okay, so I have a troll hunter too now. I might have to roll for her. Mm-hmm. I totally forgot what I was doing there for a second. It's like, okay, no, I'm shading. That's that's what I'm doing. Man, her finger looks weird. That's cool. Oh darn, not rolling more. I know, of course. Of course you can't support that. I definitely didn't see her binder of characters yesterday. Although, what should I say? Um, the problem with rolling more characters is the need for more dice. I'm not shaming your binder. I'm just saying that you're not going to be the person to stop me from rolling a character. Also, your organization on that binder is impressive. So... Don't you worry. <laughs> oh, look. She's beautiful. Okay. Now. Time to start getting into the, like, best parts. Bring that up a little bit. Okay. Boop. And this will be my new room. Hmm. Maybe this mauve. It's fine. Nice. No, no, no purple. That's too much purple. You know 
want something more subtle than that. That's... Wait, where are you looking at stuff? Oh, oh, in my brush library. That's all. Let's give her... <laughs> nice. I'm I'm cool with this. You know, I heard you were talking about someone's book. Oh, 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 oh. My friend has a book of characters, like a, um, a binder full of characters. <laughs> and she's actually one of the players on tonight's show, The Gauntlet. So here's the thing, is I need to take that A out, <laughs> because even though that's the proper German, that is not how they spell it in... Oops. Ah, uh, delete. Yeah, I do have a Discord. If you want to pop in and connect, then I can connect with you and we can, you can just like DM me or something and show me your work. Yeah, I'd love to see some of it though. I, I don't have that, but I do have this. So, sh Oop, come on, type, type. Are you gonna type? Hold on. There you go. Which is a great time to plug because we're kind of coming to the end of the show. Um, if you would like to, oh, I wish I had noticed that this whole time. Oopsie, sorry, everybody. So, 
If you would like to follow me on any of my socials, please do. Um, here is Doppelganger. And I think that she looks amazing. And it's time to pick the next one. So let me quickly open my spreadsheet. Because, <laughs> again, we're talking about organization and stuff. I love a spreadsheet. Like, mm. love it. So, pick a number between 1 and 200. The answer is 99. 99? What a great number. Ninety-nine, ninety-nine, ninety-nine. Oh, okay, everybody. Next Friday... Does anyone want to take a guess as to what, what we're doing? Hmm? Hmm? Let's see. That would be... What day next week? What is Friday? Is that the second or the third? Oh, it's the fourth. That's great. Good job, Brain. Okay, I think it's a flump, a shrub, a zombie. None of those. Um, although, now I kind of feel like I need to make the the shrub, the animated shrub, but make it fashion. Who, will someone put that in the chat, please? Like, just fill it up with some shrubs. <laughs> um, so, what we are doing on Friday next week at 3 p.m. Pacific time is the um, Frost Giant. So that's next week. I'm excited because that's a very Norwegian thing, or at least it's it's within a lot of Norse mythology, Frost Giants and stuff. So um, I don't know a lot about them, but my guess is I'll do some reading between now and then, and we'll just have a, a good old time with the Frost Giant. Another reminder that if you would like to support me in any other way, I do have a Patreon. I also have a shop where you can get prints of everything that I'm making here on this show, as well as actual garments. Um, and I did promise, and we have about 10 minutes before Adventurer's Pack goes live with the gauntlet. So maybe we can do a little bit of work on my secret that I mentioned, and I'm sorry that Krom is gonna miss it now, but my secret is somewhere. I am making a t-shirt um, that is basically a map um, it's going to be like a, a fantasy style map. I think I need to go in and clean some stuff up, but I'm not anywhere close to being done. This is about 20 inches by 26 inches, the actual file. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there's a lot for me to cover. But this is just the front panel. And I'm just turning down the, the music a little bit because I can't hear myself think. But So I'm going to be making a map shirt that will be available in my shop probably by early next month, maybe mid-month, depending on how long this takes me. Um, but it'll be full front back on the sleeves as well. And then if this goes well, it's a t-shirt, I'll be able to offer this in other things like skirts, dresses, leggings, um, tank tops, crop tops, you name it. And I'm also looking into doing some stuff where I'm going to make the actual shirt from Wednesday's show, um, which I can do. So I, I have a source that can print fabric for me. And also it has there's a shirt pattern that I can just cut and sew, which is great. So yes, and yes, Shady Scott, there, there will be skirts eventually of this piece. So... 
Um, that's the secret. So I think I can just work on this a little bit. And we can work on a continent or something. Let's work on this island. <laughs> and then, oh, oh, something else I should show you. I made a deciduous tree brush. Let's go down to this continent. Oh, that's too small. Um, so I could, I could just like go through and decide, oh, I want some trees here. Some trees here and clean up any ones that I don't like. So yes, yes, I'm, I'm thrilled with that. I'm going to make more of those brushes. And I'm half tempted to figure out how I can put them together in like a, a package. So like if people do want to make maps, they can they can use my brushes. I don't know how that works. I need to look that up. I'm still fairly new with Procreate. So um, let's give this one a volcano. I love drawing maps. I've been drawing maps ever since I was a kid. And I do have the drawing grid on this one because I want everything to be oriented the right way. So, um, and just to let you know, the reason that I'm just holding on, I'm going to see tonight again if we can actually raid Adventurer's Pack. Because I've been trying to do that for like weeks in a row, weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and it won't let me. So I'm trying again. And I think, oops. What was I saying? Um, isn't it like insanity to try and do things <laughs> over and over again and expect new results? Well, I'm trying it again. Okay. It's an island and it's yin and yang. Oh, that's fun. Cool. Yeah, and I'll make sure I'll check out your stuff. I do basically a work um, right after this, which is me modding. It's not that much work, but well, it can be sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, I'll take a look at that after the show. Um, and also, Leaky, please come with us to watch Adventures Pack the Gauntlet. I think you'd get a kick out of it since you seem to like... Um, D and D, sorry, my eyes are really itchy today. So, oh, thank you, Carrie. So, just a few hills Oops. on this one. That's an eraser. Nope. <laughs> okay, that's a huge volcano. I need to, I need to shrink that just a little bit. That's one thing that I kind of keep forgetting about is like the scale. It's like I should probably pay attention to that. And let's put it like here so it's not perfectly centered. <laughs> no. No back seat. Yeah. I mean, it does need a rim. I'm trying to figure out... I'm not doing a lot of detail on some of this stuff because I don't know exactly what style I want to do it in. Like, because, yes, that makes it... Whoops. A little bit more, and I could always crag it up, but it's one of those things of, well... You know, how much do I want to do? I don't know. 
But yeah, so I'll be working on this over the next few days and weeks. It's going to take a long time because I have a front and a back and sleeves too. And I do want the front and back to sort of match up, if at all possible. So like, this continent will extend onto the back. This continent over here will extend onto the back. And same with this corner one. So it'll, it should be fun. It should be a lot of fun. And that'll be available in my shop sometime next, next month. Um, it does look like Adventures Pack is live. So thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to try. Um, <laughs> we're going to try. Which means it's probably going to get really pissed off at me. Um, my computer will be and my internet will. So if I lose you, thank you all so much for watching. You're amazing. Um, Leaky, it was so great to have you here. You're amazing. Yeah, I will. I'll link to their channel if this doesn't work. Um, <laughs> so. And I guess I can take off my drawing glove. I'm going to go back here, though, for a second and end this screen, and then is it under video producer or creator dashboard? Yep. Yep, we're all we're all headed there, but we're hoping for a successful raid. Come on, <laughs> let's do this. And if not, I'll link. I'll get up to work. I believe in me. Raid channel. <laughs> okay. Thank you all so much for watching. The raid is happening. Um, so I will see you all next Monday for Art But Make It Fashion at 2 p.m. Pacific time. And Wednesday at also 2 p.m. Pacific time. So see you all over at the Adventures Pack channel. Bye. <laughs>